Welcome to episode two of NeoVim for Noobs and everyone else really. In this series, we're creating a modern and modular NeoVim configuration that will supercharge your NeoVim to make it even better than most text editors and IDEs, in my unbiased opinion at least. Now, if you missed episode one, I highly suggest you go back and check that out so that you can have an understanding of what we're doing in terms of like the base of our configuration, then come back here when you're ready. But either way, let's recap what we've done so far. So we've created our initial configuration within our .config slash nvim directory, and we can open up this configuration directory. We we can do control P and we use telescope to fuzzy find our files. We go to init.lua and this is essentially what we set up so far. We started off with some Vim settings that make my life easier personally. It's spaces instead of tabs and I use two spaces instead of four or the tab character. It's your own personal preference, but that's just what I use. And we also set our map leader to space. Then we chose our package manager and I think we chose correctly with lazy because lazy is pretty amazing. And then we installed some of our core plugins with this package manager. We installed stuff like Catpuchin, which is our color scheme. We installed NVim Telescope, which is what we just used to fuzzy find our files and to live grep throughout our project. And we installed NVim Tree Sitter, which is the thing we're gonna be using to highlight our code and also indent it. And it works awesome. So that's the base of our configuration. And in this episode, we're gonna be taking things even further and we're gonna be leveraging a lot of really cool stuff out of Lazy to modularize our configuration, break this init.lua file up into smaller chunks, it's gonna be really cool. I'm excited. I hope you're excited too. Let's get into it. So now that we have a few plugins and settings in our configuration file, things are starting to get a little messy. And I really wanna break this up and modularize it, put it into separate files, make things a little bit easier to read and understand. But as of right now, I don't think we have a really good way of visualizing our file structure. So let's add a plugin that is familiar to probably everyone who's used VS Code or any other IDE. Let's add a file explorer tree to NeoVim. Now there are two big boy players in this space here. There's NeoTree and NVim tree. Now I think both of these offer very similar features and I've actually used NVim tree before in a previous project, but NeoTree has some interesting features that I wanna try out and show off here. So I'm gonna go with NeoTree for this configuration. Now in order to add NeoTree, just like a lot of other plugins, there is an example for Lazy, which is our package manager. So we can essentially just copy and paste this into our Lua table that we have for our init.lua. So we paste that in here. We can delete some of these comments because we don't really need them. Find dash, there we go. And that's it, let's auto indent. Cool, looking good. Now this is interesting, NeoTree does have a few dependencies. Uh, one of them is Plannery, which we already have. So we could delete this, but I'm just gonna leave it in there to see what happens. Now we have another dependency, which is NVim Web Dev Icons, which provides glyphs in a nerd font that allows you to see the file types that you're looking at within this tree explorer. Now, I'm not gonna cover this too much in this video because this is more about configuring NeoVim and less about configuring your terminal. But essentially what you wanna do is you wanna have a nerd font. I'm currently using the JetBrains nerd font, but essentially what you wanna do is download a nerd font and configure it for your terminal. I'm using iTerm2. I actually have another video where I explain how to configure nerd fonts for iTerm2, so maybe I'll link that up here or up here or something like that, but either way, I'm not gonna cover it right now. Just understand that web dev icons gives you the glyphs that nerd fonts can use so that you can see the cool icons for the files in your NeoVim tree explorer. So now let's exit out of NeoVim, open it back up, and NeoTree is being installed with all of its dependencies via Lazy. Awesome. Okay, now that NeoTree is installed through Lazy, we can set some key maps to actually show NeoTree. But to start off with, we could probably see, yes, we have the command NeoTree available to us. We could type NeoTree and there are some command arguments. So if we type file system reveal write, file system reveal write, we see we have the tree on the right hand side of our screen. Okay, cool. So now let's do this. Um, I don't really like using the right hand side of my screen because I'm not crazy. So let's go with left. Awesome. So now if we want to set up a key map, um, we can simply just do that right here. Vim.keymap.set. We want to set our key map to, let's say leader. N. And that will call Neo tree file system reveal left. We wanna make sure we 
press the carriage return at the end of that. So now let's exit NeoVim, reopen it, hit Control N, oh, space N, and there we go. But that's not actually what I wanted. I said space N, but really I wanted Control N. So let me just fix that right now. C, N, that is Control N. Let's exit NVim, open it back up. So Control N will show our file system. Awesome. That's amazing. So now we have what I think we need in order to sort of visualize what we want when we break up this big init.lua file. So if we look at the documentation for Lazy really quick, we can see under structuring your plugins, Lazy has a really cool feature. Essentially what you have here with Lazy is that in this special directory, which is Lua, you can add a file called plugins.lua. And if that file returns a Lua table with all of our packages, what we can do is change what we have right now, which is kind of this messy sort of require lazy dot setup with a local variable of plugins, which is a table that has all kinds of crap in it to just something like this. And that looks pretty cool to me. So let's do that now. Essentially what we can do is just grab this local table, local variable here. Let's delete that. And then inside of NeoTree, we wanna add a new directory and file. So let's hit A for add. And we wanna do Lua slash plugins dot Lua. Hit enter. That creates the new file and the directory that that file resides in. So if we go into plugins dot Lua, we can paste what we had before. And let's just change this to a return statement where we merely just return a Lua table that contains all of our configurations. Now, if we go back to our init.lua, we can make sure that we're requiring lazy and setting up with just a string of plugins. Now, what'll happen here is lazy is gonna automatically load our file because we specified the string plugins and that's all we have to do right now. So let's quit NeoVim and reopen it and everything works. Okay, awesome. Now, as you might've caught in the documentation, there's a special directory that will be loaded and reloaded on change for plugins. And the documentation explains it here. Some users may wanna split their plugin specs in multiple files. Instead of passing a spec table to set up, you can use a Lua module. The specs from the module and any top level sub modules will be merged together in the final spec. So it is not needed to add require calls in your main plugin file to other files. What does this mean? Well, essentially, if you structure your file system the way that Lazy expects you to, what will happen is that Lazy will load all of the files in a certain directory, and as long as they return Lua tables, Lazy will take all those tables, concatenate them together, and essentially call that your Lazy setup. Now, what is that directory? That directory is config nvim Lua plugins. If you just add Lua files in that directory and they return Lua tables, they will all be included in the setup with this one simple line, require lazy dot setup plugins. Seems pretty sick. Also, lazy is going to automatically load them on change. Let's check it out. So we still have this pretty messy configuration. So let's first create the directory we talked about by in NeoTree going to our Lua directory and hitting A for add. So let's specify that we wanna add plugins slash that'll add a new directory so we have lua plugins and within plugins let's copy over our first plugin and let's start with catpoochine that's the simplest one i think that's the easiest one to do so hit a and our new file is going to be catpoochine.lua cool oh look at that we can already see that a config change has been detected lua is or well rather lazy is automatically loading this file because it matches a certain directory that lazy is looking within to concatenate all of these lua tables into one so let's go into our catpoochine lua file what we're going to do is delete this from our lua table from our big init.lua lua table and let's go into catpoochine.lua and paste them here now obviously what we want to do is return this as a table let's make it look nice and that should be all we need. So let's close this, reopen NeoVim, and yeah, Catpoochine still works. Pretty sweet. But we have a little bit of a problem here. You see, our new plugins Catpoochine file is really nice and terse, but the issue is that we still have some leftover stuff for setting up Catpoochine in our knit.lua, and I don't like that. So let's copy this stuff over into our catpoochine.lua configuration file that returns a Lua table. But how do we do that? Well, Lazy has a special property that it looks for called config. Config is executed when the plugin loads, the default implementation will automatically run require main.setup, which means 
we are not going to need require setup, and they use several heuristics to yada, 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 yada. But you set this property to a function in Lua. What it's gonna do is run whatever is within that function after the plugin loads. So let's see what this means. So essentially what that means is we can run this vim function, vim command color scheme capuchin within our setup configuration function in our new Lua table. Let's see what that looks like. So we go to our new capuchin.lua file, we add a comma, and we wanna set our config property to a function. And that function is going to do vim command color scheme capuchin. Now you'll notice that I deleted the require capuchin.setup line right here, and that's because if you set this property, it will automatically call require main.setup. Okay, cool. So this should be all we need. And if we can quit NeoVim and reload it, yeah, Capuchin seems like it still works. This is an amazing pattern to follow. Now it's super easy to add new plugins and to manage the plugins we already have. So let's copy everything over that we just did before into this new style. I think this is amazing. So we have a couple other plugins here and let's copy over our telescope configuration. So we can delete that from our bigger table. We can add a telescope.lua file into our plugins uh, file, or directory rather. We open that one up, we paste what we have, we make sure to just return this as a Lua table, and then that should work. And then in our init.lua, we wanna copy over any special thing that we've set up into this configure or this config property. So this is all the telescope stuff that we have here. So now let's go back to our tree. We go to telescope. And now in here, we can set our config property to a function, paste that stuff here. And now telescope should work. Cool, now let's quit, reopen NeoVim, and there's an error. All right, so let's look into this. It's at line 11 here. Oh, I think it's because I have this extra comma. That's probably it. So let's load it back up and yep, telescope works. Awesome. This is starting to look pretty sweet here. Okay, so we have a couple more plugins to go. So let's go to our plugins.lua file and copy over tree setter. We can delete it from our plugins.lua file. We can add a new file called tree sitter under our plugins directory. Within tree sitter, we can type return and paste what we have here. And then let's format this to make it look slightly better. Remove that comma, we're learning. <laughs> and then let's check our init.lua for anything for tree sitter. And look, here we go. So let's delete that from our init.lua, come over to our tree sitter file, paste all this stuff in here, and we can type uh, config equals function end move all this stuff into here. And that should work the way we expect. Now we have just one more left here, which is the new NeoTree plugin that we installed. So let's delete that from this file. We can come over to our NeoTree, add a new file under our plugins directory called neotree.lua. Go into here, type return, paste what we have. I'm looking pretty good. And let's see, I believe we have some NeoTree configuration as well. Yes, that's right, look at that. So let's go with that and add config property equals function. That's not correct, function. Paste this in here, because our key map is set right here. And let's write and quit everything. I'm assuming we're gonna see an error or two when we reopen NVim. If we don't, that would be pretty sick. <gasps> oh, I might be a genius. So now all our plugins seem like they work. I can open NeoTree, I can use Telescope. Everything appears to be working well. We have tree sitter highlighting everything and that is awesome. Okay, now one last thing I wanna do here is copy over our Vim settings to a new file um, just to break this up a little bit more and be a little bit more consistent with what we're doing. Instead of having these settings in our init.lua, I wanna put them in a different Lua module. So I'm just gonna type out what I expect to require. I'm just gonna call it Vim options. I'm sure there's a much better name, but I'm tired and can't think of anything interesting. <laughs> 
So we require vim options and then a neo tree under our Lua directory, let's create a vim slash options dot Lua file. Now we can just delete all of our vim options from this file, go over to vim options, paste these and write everything. Now, if we leave and reopen NeoVim, uh, it seems to be working. Awesome. So now we have this wonderful modular configuration for NeoVim. And this gives us not only an easy to read and easy to sort of visualize tree structure where we can see all of our plugins and how they're configured, but it makes extending this configuration way easier. It is now so, so, so simple to add a new plugin to our configuration. It's almost stupid. Essentially, all you have to do is add a new file under this plugins directory and include the configuration that you want for that plugin and return it as a Lua table. So let's see what this looks like with a couple other plugins. I'm gonna install Lua line. Lua line is a blazing fast and easy to configure NeoVim status line written in Lua. So let's just copy this uh, short URL from GitHub and create a new file and start with that. So let's go over here. We create a new file called Lua line dot Lua. We enter this file and type return, if I could spell. And we just want to have our short URL here to start. Now there is one option that I know I'm going to need here. So I will set my config attribute and call options and set that to a table where the theme is going to be Dracula. Now I've used Lua line a bunch of times before, so I know how this works, but I want my theme to be Dracula. It looks the best with Capuchin. I don't think this is a Capuchin theme for Lua line, but I'm gonna have to check. That might've changed recently. Anyways, we quit and reopen NeoVim and look at that. Lua line is being installed and it is now installed. So let's quit and reopen NeoVim, see if Lua line gets loaded. And it doesn't. Why? Oh, I think it's because we actually want to call require Lua line and call the setup function because that is what actually sets our configuration. That might be why. So let's see if that does what we want. And hey, it does. Cool. Okay, so that didn't take too long. So now we see we have a really cool looking Lua line at the bottom of our Vim. Everyone has it, it looks cool, it's hip. So that's it for modularizing our configuration. I think we have the most amazing base for NeoVim configuration to then extend it in future episodes. By the way, next episode we're covering completions and LSPs. That's gonna take this thing to the next level. I'm super pumped about that. I'm pumped about the configuration we have right now. Please subscribe if you wanna learn more and hey, thanks nerds.